All right, Coach. Central Methodist football team on Saturday scored a 28 to 20 victory at Avila in Kansas City. It's your first win as a Central Methodist head coach. What does it feel like to finally have that win under your belt? Oh, it's great to you know, share it with all these guys. I mean, that's the thing when you go out and recruit them. These guys choose to put faith in you and faith in the program, and they come in and be a part of the program. I mean, it, it's a it's a team thing and it's a family thing. And these guys are definitely a big part of my family and the rest of my players and the coaches. And, and obviously, uh, you know, everybody that was there at the game too. I think that made it even more special to have uh, just our bands, our cheerleading squad, all the all the family and fans and support that we had. And, it, it was a really special day for all of us, but it was really special for me because I was surrounded by people that I absolutely loved. After falling behind 7 to nothing in the first quarter, the Eagles scored 21 unanswered in the second quarter to seize control of the game. Before we talk about any specific plays, what do you think was the momentum change in the game? Because for me, what it was was they had the ball third and one on our own 27 yard line driving to try to go up by two touchdowns. And then they try a bubble screen to, uh, to flanker which was incomplete, and they threw the same play, lost two yards, and got stuck on fourth and three. Well, there's a lot of momentum changes, and that's kind of, you know, what our conference is. Everybody in our conference is very good, and there's going to be momentum changes and, and a lot of things that happen during the course of the game. And, you know, I think of a number of plays. I mean, uh, Ryan's interception in the end zone was a huge play. Uh, you know, they were, they were marching, and that could have went... You know, that was going to be complete if Brian wasn't there. And that was six points for them if, if Brian wasn't there. And Brian intercepts it and runs it out. And then our offense goes down and scores. I believe Jamal catches the touchdown on the other end and, and uh, goes down and scores for us. And that's one thing I've noticed. I think every time we've got a tournament so far this year, we've scored a touchdown off of it. And, uh, so it really, uh, the other momentum part is one of the big things I remember in the game was on a kickoff. We were having trouble stopping the kickoff return team and getting out to our 35 or 40 yard line or whatever. All of a sudden, Zach Lynch runs down and he has a huge tackle on the kickoff team that stops them inside their 20 and they have a long field to go. So there was a number of plays that happened that were, you know, huge shifting plays that made a difference. But certainly Jamal's touchdown and Brian's interceptions were very important to that leading to our success. Jamal, as Coach Ford just said, you had a touchdown in the second quarter and you had a play call before. It was a 26 yard touchdown on the play. Talk about the play call, what you saw, and how you were able to beat the quarterback. Uh, like in the game, they were on cover threes. But that, on that uh, particular play, it came up and played men on me. So I just tried to beat him inside and get right back outside on top of it. Lucky the pass was there. Really quick and it really came through. Four hard to see. Was it a fair out or what exactly did you see? What did, what did you see on the play and what was your first reaction after scoring the first collegiate touchdown? My first reaction was I wasn't expecting the ball. So I was going to clear him out. So I had a man to come and get it. But I got on top of him and beat him a couple of yards and the ball was coming to me. You had a couple of catches in the game, and in the game, Caleb Borghardt completed five passes for 99 yards. How do you think the passing game helped the running game because the team rushed for over 200 yards on 36 carries? I think it kind of kept them on their toes and guessing they were going to up and what they had to do here and here and there. But at the same time, the worst of was particularly a lot of the game. And we'll go ahead and talk to Brian Blanche. As Coach Ford mentioned earlier, you had an interception in the end zone. That thwarted a that thwarted an Avalon scoring opportunity, and you returned it for approximately 30 yards. Well, we were in. Next building in Fort what was the key that you read on the play and talked about after making the interception? Well, we were in a cover one high safety, and I was a high safety in that situation. I saw the receiver coming across the field, and the quarterback had his eye on pretty much the entire time. I just used my instincts and was able to break, break on the ball and make a play. Probably should have returned it after the catch, but raining the moment got a little bit, ended up getting caught from behind, but. 
How do you think your interception helped lift the team? Because earlier in the game, Mitchell Swan also had an interception that allowed him such a good his offense to get back on the field. It was just momentum change. They were driving, about ready to drive it in to score again, and then I was able to make a play and kind of bail us out in that situation. Central Methodist will host ninth ranked Baker on Saturday. From a defensive standpoint, what do you think would be the keys in the game? What have you seen from them on the um, From what I've seen so far, Baker's got some pretty good running backs, and they're able to create and get to the edge. As a defense, we need to keep them inside, keep them getting to the keep them leverage, and stand over top of the receivers as well. They got some speed on the outside and big time play receivers. And we just need to keep, keep everything in front of us and come up and make plays. And I mean, I feel like if we lose, we're just beating ourselves. So. Thank you for the tailback transfer, Dylan. Uh, Dylan Baxter, who's a transfer from the University of Southern California and was the number one overall running back in the nation coming out a couple of years ago. What kind of challenge do you think he will pose for your defense? Well, he is a challenge. I mean, he can make some crazy cuts. I mean, if you go square him up, he can really make a miss. And that's where game tackling and leverage comes into play. And also, uh, he's got a very good offensive line in front of him. And that offensive line is, uh, you know, they have, I think, two sophomores, uh, two seniors and a junior or something like that. And, and uh, so they're very seasoned veterans over there. Uh, we'll have our hands full, for sure. But, uh, again, it, it's a very simple game. It comes down to leverage and tackling. And, you know, same thing offensively. comes down to blocking and doing your job. And, uh, the team that does their job and executes the team that's going to be successful. And, again, we just got to limit our mistakes. And if we play good, we play good. Coach Moore, I'll give the final question to you. As I just asked uh, Brian Fletch, what do you think will be the keys to the game on Saturday on both sides of the ball in order to put up Eagles and hopefully play the win? Well, one thing that helped us uh, this past Saturday was ball security. I think we had one turnover on offense and we were able to get to on defense. And anytime you can be in the plus category turnover wide, that's really big. Uh, the second thing is we need to have some explosive plays. I mean, uh, we need to have some plays that are over uh, 15, 20 yards. And that's something that. Uh, you know, we feel like that we really got to work on our own and uh, keep working to get those explosive plays. And, and then just do what we do, get better at what we do. Um, you know, I think that's the thing, too, is we, we got better with our leverage and how we play uh, defense. Felt like offensively we're getting better with our blocking schemes. You're not seeing, uh, or, you know, defensive players come from somewhere where somebody missed a block or something like that. And, and, uh, and it's allowing things to open up. And I think that's the thing with the guys is they're really learning the systems and, after three weeks, we start to clean up mistakes and we play better. And it's kind of like Brian said, if we don't beat ourselves, we're, we're a pretty good team to play. Um, but uh, one thing I want to tell you about these guys, too, is I, I don't know if anybody knows this, but man, recruiting these two guys, it, it was tough to get them here to Central Methodist now. I mean, in terms of Brian, this was like four years ago, and I had to beat out a lot of Division II schools for Brian. I said, Brian, what's it going to take? And boy, Brian, man, man, he wanted me to open up the pocket I had to go back to find out, find out what kind of cash we had. O'Brien was a tough sell, but by golly, we got it done, and he got in here, and we always knew he was going to be the face of our program someday. He's doing a great job. And in terms of Jamal, Jamal has an agent. I don't know if anybody knows this, but he, he's got a little brother at home that's his agent, and so anytime we call him, he's not going to answer the phone. The little brother answers the phone. He says, who is this? And uh, I said, this is Coach Ford. I'd like to talk to Jamal. I said, well, do you have an appointment? Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Jamal, these guys are tough to recruit. They may be better recruiters just by trying to get them here. And I'm glad they're here. They're doing a great job. And, and uh, really proud of these two young men. They're growing more and more every day. And, and uh, I can't tell you how much they mean to be a great guy. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah. Yeah. How about that fourth quarter uh, touchdown that did quite the over? Oh, on the, uh, uh, which one was it? I'm sorry. Uh, you started, you started about the fourth and short where you thought about picking up the overall. Oh, yeah. See, that was a big, I thought that was a big mistake by me in the game when you talked about mistakes. Because I probably should have kicked it there and made it a three-score game. But, you know, I have a lot of confidence in my guys. And uh, I have a lot of faith in my guys. And that's where, um, for me, I thought, you know what? I really believe our guys will get this. And if they don't get it, I really believe our defense will stop. Well, that backfired two ways if we didn't get it. And then he went down on a 99 yard drive. So I, uh, I learned from that. But that's one thing I told the kids is I'm always going to put faith in them. And, uh, and that's where I want us to win the game. 
if anything, the one thing I love about that experience is it's a learning experience for all of us. And I want our guys to learn from it because the next time I choose to do that, when we go, they'll know what they have to do to get it in, and defensively, we'll know what we need to do to stop them. And if you don't put the guys in that situation, they're not going to know how to respond to it. So I was really proud of how we handled that adversity because it was adversity. And, uh, and that's what the game is, and that's what life is. And they did a nice job handling it as we went and ended up winning the game. So I was really proud of the kids.